Welcome back to another video presentation from Phlebotomy Solutions and Victor Valley Phlebotomy Training. Today we're going to be talking about the components of blood. So let's talk about whole blood. What does whole blood contain? Well, whole blood contains red blood cells known as erythrocytes, white blood cells known as leukocytes, platelets known as thrombocytes, and plasma, also known as lymph. All right, let's talk about the cellular components of blood. Now, cellular components of blood are blood cells, and they originate from the bone marrow. Now, cells develop into three types. Erythrocytes, known as red blood cells, or RBCs. Leukocytes, known as white blood cells, or WBCs. And of course, thrombocytes, also known as platelets. All right, let's talk about erythrocytes, or red blood cells. Now, red blood cells carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. RBCs also carry hemoglobin, which is a combination of iron and protein that gives blood its red color. And RBCs live about four months. They also produce, they are also produced in the bone marrow at a rate of one million a second, the same rate as they wear out. Now, let's continue with erythrocytes, or RBCs. Now, there are millions of red blood cells in just one tiny drop of blood. 4.5 to 6.1 million RBCs per cubic milliliter of blood. Now, for males, the typical range is 4.7 to 6.1 milliliter. For females, the range is 4.2 to 5.4 milliliter per cubic of blood. Now, they are biconcave, meaning they are curved inward on both sides. This shape allows for flexibility, enabling them to pass through capillaries without rupturing. And RBCs contain hemoglobin, a protein that binds to oxygen and carries it throughout the body. All right, let's talk about now leukocytes or WBCs, white blood cells. Now, there are five main WBCs or white blood cells, neutrophils, basophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, and eosinophils. Now, white blood cells are responsible for fighting infection, and the range or the normal range of white blood cells is 5,000 to 9,000 per cubic millimeter. So if you're getting a blood test that includes white blood cell count and it is elevated above 9,000, it is most likely that you are fighting an infection or that you have an infection in your body. All right, let's continue with leukocytes or white blood cells. Now, they could defend the body by destroying foreign invaders such as bacteria, viruses, and other pathogens. They can also move through capillary walls to reach infected tissues, surround and destroy harmful pathogens at the site of infection. Now, leukocytes are round and white in appearance and do not contain hemoglobin. Now, remember, hemoglobin is what gives the blood cells the red color with a combination of iron and protein. And when you have an infection, white blood cells multiply to help fight off the invaders. Hence, you would have elevated white blood cells in the blood cell count, approximately over 9,000. All right, let's move on to thrombocytes, also known as platelets. Now, they are the smallest in size of all cellular components. And platelets are not complete blood cells. They are fragments from a larger blood cell. And platelets stick together at a site of injury, forming a platelet plug. And platelets are the smallest of the blood cells. Platelets are also responsible for clotting. And the normal range for platelets is 200,000 to 400,000 per cubic of blood. And platelets are formed in the bone marrow. All right, let's talk about the liquid component of blood. The liquid portion of blood is composed of plasma and or serum. When whole blood is placed in a centrifuge and spun for a certain amount of time, you will see a division between plasma, which is the yellow fluid at the top, and then the platelets or the white cells are in the middle with the red cells that settle at the bottom. So let's talk about plasma. What color is plasma? Well, it's a pale yellow fluid, mostly water, 
and mixed with nutrients, proteins, ions, gases, waste, and fibrinogen. And fibrinogen assists in the clotting of blood. Now let's talk about serum. Serum is very similar to what? Plasma minus the fibrinogen. The only difference between serum and plasma is that serum does not contain fibrinogen. All right, this now concludes our PowerPoint presentation of Components of Blood, brought to you by Victor Valley Phlebotomy Training and Phlebotomy Solutions.